Toby. How's it going, man? Hey, it's going good. How about you? <laughs> Just great. Oh, Toby, it's fun to look back and think about the start of the, the, the corridor. I remember that wonderful Saturday before Christmas back in 1991, and the phone rings. Well, I knew you wouldn't be busy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I, my guess is it was probably around 10 in the morning, the Saturday before Christmas, and I pick up the phone, and it's Toby, and Toby says, Herman, I need you at a meeting in Spencer. Uh, can you make it? I said, you bet, I'll be there. Well, it was a way that uh, we had to figure out how to get the McCoys and the Clampets <laughs> to quit feuding. You know, Dickinson and Clay County were continually competing wow. against each other, and nobody knew the reason why. Even though we haven't combined in a formal way, we know that what's good in Clay County is good in Dickinson County. We knew that if we could promote the area together, we'd be better off than trying to compete against each other. Would the counties or would the, would the cities understand what we were trying to do? Would they, would cooperation uh, trump competition? Uh, was that a, even an idea that people would, would accept, let alone donate some money to? And we were kind of at that point where we need to decide, is this organization going to continue to live or was it a good experiment that didn't work? So many people not only accepted the challenge to step up and to help create a cooperative effort within the area, but put their hearts as well as their pocketbooks behind the effort. We felt it was important to meet in a middle location so that people didn't feel that one north side or south side of the corridor was trying to take an advantage, so we chose Milford. And there was a small group of um, people from the Industries Foundation and people from the Dickinson County Industrial Board um, that were meeting and we met weekly, 7 o'clock in the morning and we really discussed you know, what, what could the future look like, what should this organization look like, who should we include, how should we operate, how should we be funded and those were the basis for the discussions of our early morning meetings and so it really set the foundation for the future of the corridor as you currently see it. I remember when the four lane between Spencer and Milford was completed. And to talk about finally everybody working together, we had a good meeting about where are we gonna cut the rip? Cut it at the county line. Cut it, cut it in Fostoria, man. Just like the, the Promontory Point, Utah, driving the Golden Spike. And I love Bruce Tamasia's famous story about Fostoria, what do you mean? I had mentioned that this was like the demilitarized zone uh, because it was kind of the safe area. And from that moment on, Herman always referred to our meetings as the DMZ meetings. And Bruce says, hey guys, I grew up the lakes between lakes. And he says, I remember when that county line was the DMZ. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason that's probably somewhat humorous now is uh, the simple thing that we really needed to accomplish between us all was develop trust. You know, really that first four years of the, the pilot project where um, they had the members coming together really set the foundation for future years because it helped develop that trust and build relationships and that led to you know open discussion and sharing of opinions and really starting to create a vision for the future. Even though we may have known each other socially, uh, we'd never really worked together on projects throughout the corridor region and it took us about 18 months as a formal board to develop a trust inside our room and then we knew we were going to face a more daunting challenge going outside and engaging other uh, city councils and government officials and private parties to help us achieve our goals. To help kind of form future relationships, we had an office location in Spencer and an office location in the Lakes area. So we had a person present in each so that people really were feeling like attention was being paid in both counties. We set out uh, first to describe what we were interested in doing, that is creating a video and the initial marketing efforts for the uh, newly formed corridor. Wouldn't it be great to make a good living? Wouldn't it be great to live a little too? I don't know. I'm here because it's a very pleasant place to live. It's a very pleasant place to work, a very pleasant place to own a business. You know, life is great here. Wouldn't it be great to live out a dream? Just look at your life, you can't live it again. In Northwest Iowa, 
there's a highway that rolls north out of Clay County into Dickinson County. It's a ribbon that ties together 35,000 residents of our many communities. Along this corridor are rolling fields, tree-lined boulevards, beautiful lakes, fabulous resorts, wonderful shops, miles of recreational trails, and unlimited opportunities. Opportunities for success, for happiness, for business, for family, for striking a critical balance between our professional and personal lives. This is the Iowa Great Lakes Corridor of Opportunity, or around here we just say great. You may already know the Iowa Great Lakes Corridor as a fun getaway from your everyday life. But when you're here savoring its relaxation and peace, listen harder. You'll hear the sounds of manufacturing, innovative ideas, and worldwide marketing. While you're here enjoying its activities and beauty, look closer. You'll see a diversity of thriving businesses and industries, progressive companies, successful ventures, and happy people. Yes, this is a wonderful place and very surprising. We invite you to come, enjoy yourself, and take another look. Then consider working and living in a place like this. Just say great to make a good living. Just say great to live a little too. Just say great to have a little extra time to do what's important to you. Just say great. It's just a great place to run a business from. Just say great. I have not created this growth myself. This growth has occurred because of my co-workers. It's out there. That's, what, that's what's made it. Just say great. It's a community of immense opportunity. Just say great. We wish we'd have found it years ago. Just say great. In terms of the balance of all the things you look for in life, this is the greatest place to live I can imagine. The Iowa Great Lakes Corridor of Opportunity. Just say great. In so many communities, the economic development work is done in a small community. With the Lakes Corridor, what we've been able to do is to take four counties, take all the resources of those four counties, and shared them as, as one. I think inclusion of the corridor in the name gave us a better title for what we were really trying to achieve. Um, back at that time, common sense told us that the state would have to have counties join together in some type of an effort, and we thought it was better serving our needs and our future uh, success by picking our partners rather than being placed with a partner. 99 counties in the state of Iowa. You want to pick your partner? Or do you want to have your partner pick? <laughs> you have it assigned. And so the corridor represented a concept of joining with other people, but not limiting us to who it might all include. And as you've seen now, uh, in the beginning, we started with just two counties until we got the processes under control and knew how to work together. And then and only then did we expand it out to today's current four counties. The state of Iowa, uh, especially the Department of Economic Development, took some special interest in what we were doing. They knew about the Golden Circle in Des Moines, but they didn't know so much about how regional efforts like ours uh, would work out. One of the exciting things, I think, um, at least for me as, as a volunteer that happened as a result of, of the meetings and forming the new structures, we put the funding structure in place and we were able to hire an executive director. I called Rand Fisher and talked about the fact that the corridor was in this. We needed leadership, we needed somebody that knew economic development and he suggested that we talk to Kathy Ebert, who was in the Quad Cities at the time. All of us are very, very passionate about this region and want this region to do well over the long term. You know, half of the staff is, has lived here their whole life or been here for a number of years and others of us have chosen uh, to move here and to live here uh, just because of the passion that we have uh, for this part of, of Iowa and the Midwest. So uh, we're all deeply rooted and deeply committed to helping the Iowa Lakes Corridor region be the best that it can be. It's fun to be on the outside looking in Wish I'd have been there on the inside with Kathy. Uh, I was leaving as she was coming in, but she's made a big difference in her efforts to keep a region focused on not little individual successes, but the overall success in the region. I think it continues to build buy-in throughout the uh, corridor region today. 
We have four major initiatives, and two of them are really built around this population a challenge. One is how do we attract and retain people and workers in the region? How do we help retrain and make sure we have a, an available and trained workforce for the employers today as well as the employers tomorrow? It's absolutely incredible, the work ethic in the state of Iowa and the ability to run a company that the people work so hard, they help, they help build greatness. It's, it's just a wonderful environment. The other two goals are to continue to build on our entrepreneurship activities that have really gained so much momentum and support in the last six or seven years and grow our own companies from within. The Iowa Corridor has done so much to stimulate business, not only to help existing businesses, but to help create new ones. And maybe the greatest accomplishment there has been the founding of the Okaboji Entrepreneurial Institute, which brings together the universities, Buena Vista, uh, the community colleges, the best students and the brightest students throughout Iowa to Okaboji for a week every summer. And then our continued business development efforts with the existing industries and, and then continuing to market the area to prospective industries. When I left the board, the, the organization was going strong, so that was a really good feeling to be a part of something that grew and, and uh, was respected throughout the, the state of Iowa and really throughout the country. And the board, the leadership, if they hadn't done what they did 15 years ago or seven years ago, the organization wouldn't be here today. So key business leadership made all the difference. It still does today. When you look at the richness of lifestyle in our area, it's the lakes, it's the multiple communities, it's the people that live here year round, it's the people that come spend their summers here. And together, it's a very rich culture uh, maybe unheard of anywhere else in Iowa. So without the Lakes Corridor, we wouldn't have melded all of our communities together as one and really leveraged the richness of what makes this place so great. What a wonderful area to raise a family, good schools, good, you know, it just, it's got it all. There has been 20 great years of leadership from the business community in the public sector in this region that without, there would not be an Iowa Lakes Port or Development Corporation today. So big kudos to all the business and community leaders who helped start the corridor, who have helped uh, sustain the corridor, and who helped funding and, and moving the corridor for the next 20 years. You know, gee, with all the successes and, and of course our beautiful Iowa Great Lakes, the, the campus of the University of Okoboji, we've had fun with that too. I, <laughs> I've noticed that. <laughs> You ready, Herman? I'm ready. Okay, let's get it. Yes, on. sir. Okay. <laughs>